The appearance of local contractors in this video does not imply an endorsement of their services by the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. A complete listing of contractors and haulers can be found in the yellow pages or by contacting the Department of Health. Every day, the average household uses approximately 250 gallons of water, washing dishes, cooking, doing laundry, and taking showers or baths. All of that water ends up going down the drain as wastewater. But have you ever wondered what happens to it after that? Here in Anne Arundel County, many homes aren't hooked up to a city sewer. Instead, a highly efficient on-site sewage treatment system called the septic system is used. Hi, I'm Susan House, and when I moved here, I knew I had a septic system, but I wasn't sure what it was or how to properly maintain it. Six years later, I had to spend thousands of dollars to repair my failing system because I didn't do a few simple things to maintain it. A properly maintained system can provide not only effective treatment and disposal of your household wastewater, but it can last indefinitely. In this program, we are going to look at what a septic system is and how it works, what can cause the system to fail and how to prevent it, and what type of regular maintenance needs to be performed. A regularly maintained system can provide efficient wastewater treatment and also save you a lot of money and headaches. But before you learn how to maintain your system, you first need to know what a system is and how it works. A recirculating filter system, which is most commonly used for sites with limiting site conditions, consists of the septic tank, the pump chamber with pump, the recirculating filter, the drain field, and most importantly, the soil. The septic tank stores the wastewater from your house and separates out the solids. The effluent flows from the tank into the pump chamber and is pumped to the recirculating filter where it is treated as it flows through the sand or shale. Part of the effluent flows to the drain field while the rest is returned to the pump chamber for further treatment. The drain field disperses the effluent into the soil and it's in the soil that the effluent receives final treatment before being returned to the groundwater. Here's how it works. Wastewater flows from your home through the pipes and into the first chamber of your two-chamber septic tank. Here the household waste separate into three layers. Heavy solids settle to the bottom of the tank, forming a layer called sludge. The lighter solids, like grease and paper, float to the top, forming the scum layer. The sludge and scum layers are what need to be regularly pumped from your tank and hauled away. Between the sludge and scum layers is a zone of relatively clear liquid called effluent. The effluent flows out of the first chamber and into the second chamber. Here, the separation process is repeated. The effluent then flows into the pump chamber. In the pump chamber is a pump, on-off float, and a high water alarm float. When the effluent rises to the level of the on float, or at specific times controlled by a timer in the control panel, the pump begins gently forcing the effluent under pressure to the recirculating filter, which consists of a two-chamber tank that contains two collection drains, the filter media, such as sand or shale, a network of distribution pipes and covers, and an airtight lid to prevent odors from escaping. As the effluent moves through the recirculating filter, bacteria in the sand or shale break down pollutants, producing a relatively clean effluent. At the bottom of the recirculating filter, this treated effluent is collected in the collection drains. Some is returned to the pump chamber for additional treatment, while the rest flows to the drain field and filters through the soil, where it receives final treatment before being returned to the groundwater. During a 24-hour period, the amount of wastewater entering the septic system fluctuates. Peak flow periods are typically in the mornings, evenings, and weekends when families are taking showers, doing the laundry, and washing dishes. At night, when people are sleeping, and during the day while people are at work and school, there is less flow to the septic system. With a recirculating filter, one of the goals is to manage these variable flows so that the effluent is pumped to the recirculating filter evenly throughout the day. You don't want to oversaturate or flood the filter. Instead, 
you want to give it a dose, let it soak in, then give it another dose. Small volume doses allow the effluent to move slowly through the sand or shale particles with plenty of time for natural bacterial reduction to take place. By contrast, if you were to flood the system, the effluent would percolate so rapidly through the sand there wouldn't be enough contact time for adequate treatment. Controlled small doses allow for maximum treatment of the effluent. To do this, your system stores the effluent in the pump chamber and then gradually disperses it to the sand filter in small doses. The pump chamber works much like a reservoir which stores up water behind its floodgates during the rainy season. The levels behind the dam may rise and fall with the seasons, but there is always a consistent flow of water being released. The flow of wastewater through the pump chamber is controlled by float switches located in the tank and a programmable timer located in the control panel. When the effluent reaches the lowest level in the pump chamber, the bottom or on-off float is in its off position making the timer inactive. The liquid level is normally at this position in the early morning hours when no water is being used. As incoming flow raises the float to its on position, the timer instructs the pump to begin sending small doses of filtered effluent intermittently to the recirculating filter. The peak inflow that typically occurs in the morning and evening usually exceeds the outflow to the recirculating filter and the pump chamber begins to fill. The timed small doses will catch up during periods of lower water use, lowering the liquid level in the pump chamber until the on-off float reaches the off position, deactivating the timer and preventing further dosing until the liquid level rises again. Even though the levels in the pump chamber rise and fall over the course of a 24-hour period, the distribution of effluent to the recirculating filter is kept consistent by the on-off float and the programmable timer. Occasionally, when more sewage enters the tank than it can store, the liquid level rises to the top float, which immediately turns on both the pump and the high water alarm. The pump continuously disperses effluent to the sand filter, quickly lowering the level in the septic tank until the high water alarm float drops to its off position, usually within two minutes, and the alarm shuts off. Infrequent short-term high water alarm conditions are normally nothing to worry about, especially if they coincide with overnight guests or occasional parties when use of the septic system is greater than usual. Frequent and or continuous alarms usually indicate a problem with the system that needs to be checked. They can be caused by leaky faucets, a running toilet, or too many loads of laundry in a short period of time. Owning a home is a big investment. You want to protect that investment by doing annual maintenance such as cleaning gutters, painting, and making sure everything works properly. Your septic system is no different. It also requires regular maintenance to keep it operating properly. But in order to do this, there are some important things you need to know about your system. To keep your system functioning properly, you will need to do some annual maintenance, which includes having periodic inspections of your system and having your tank pumped by a licensed hauler when necessary. To find out what needs to be inspected, and when you need to have your tank pumped, we are going to talk with Bob, a licensed hauler. I have him on a maintenance contract to come inspect my system on a regular basis. Hi, Bob. Hi, how you doing? Good. I see you have my tank exposed. Now, you've shown me where my tank is, but if someone didn't know where theirs was, how would they find it? Uh, you've got locator caps. They're located on top of the lids of the tank. Uh, one in the front, one in the back. Or you can contact your builder or Anne Arundel Health Department. They'll have it on record. Now, when you're inspecting a tank, what are th some things you're looking for? Uh, the water level in the tank. Uh, that indicates that everything's coming from the house into the tank and out to your drain fields properly. And uh, the scum layer, uh, make sure there's no ponding in your yard. How often do you get your tank pumped? Uh, we recommend any time between three to four years. Uh, depending on the usage of, uh, of your system, how many people you have in your house. Uh, obviously, the more people you have in the house, the more usage, you want to have it done more often. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have your system inspected on some regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. While Bob is inspecting the tank, let's see what he will be checking for. Remember earlier, I said that in the tank, the sludge settles to the bottom, the scum layer floats to the top, 
and the relatively clear layer of effluent forms in the middle. Well, if the sludge reached the bottom of the outflow tee, sludge could go to the recirculating filter and could clog the pipes and the media, causing damage to your system. Your tank will also need to be pumped if the scum layer gets too thick. During an inspection, the pump chamber must also be checked to make sure that the on-off float and the high water alarm float work properly. Sometimes, a small amount of suspended solids get into the pump chamber and can clog the filter screens around the pump. These screens must be cleaned on a regular basis to keep your system operating properly. The screen should be washed over the opening of the septic tank so the backwash is returned to the system for further treatment. The recirculating filter distribution pipes can also become partially clogged, causing an uneven distribution of effluent over the sand or shale. The distribution pipes are flushed out by removing one end cap at a time and turning on the pump in the pump chamber. Because of the potential health risk, you will need to consult with your licensed hauler or contractor for assistance when cleaning clogged laterals. Once the pipes have been flushed and the end caps put back in place, a visual inspection is done to make sure the effluent is now being evenly distributed over the filter. The important thing to remember is to have your system inspected on a regular basis by a reputable licensed hauler. They will check that it's operating properly and whether it needs to be pumped. It may cost you a little bit to sign a maintenance contract, but in the long run, it can save you a lot of money if it prevents your system from failing. So how do you know if you have a failing system? We're going to talk with Bill Deck, an inspector with the Anne Arundel County Department of Health. He's seen a variety of failing systems while working for the county. So Bill, you do a lot of inspections. Can you give me a common reason that a system would fail? Some of the most common reasons for septic system failure are uh, improper usage mm -hmm. and lack of periodic pumping of the septic tank. What are some examples of improper use? Well, for example, uh, even though county code prohibits the use of garbage disposals uh, on septic system, uh, some people do use them and they don't realize what troubles they may be causing. What is it about a garbage disposal that makes them so bad? They create a lot of uh, fine solids which don't settle out into the septic tank. Uh, they can go on to clog your drain fields and uh, in fact the situation is as bad as not having your septic tank pumped out at all. So what about chemicals and bleach detergent? What effect do they have on the system? Well what you have to remember is the septic system is a natural processing environment so you have to be very careful with any sort of chemical usage. Are there some things I can look for that will warn me of a failing system? Uh, if your system's overloaded or you're having some problems, maybe your drain fields are clogged, uh, what you may notice are some muddy areas forming around your drain fields. And uh, this is usually accompanied by uh, the smell of sewage. And what's happening here is, is that the sewage effluent uh, is no longer seeping into the ground like it was designed to do, and instead it's coming to the surface. And uh, this is a very unhealthy situation, and it's something that needs to be taken care of immediately. Hmm. Now, I've heard slow running drains can be a sign of a failing system. Why is that? Uh, well, once again, if you're having a uh, problem with your septic system, your drain fields uh, are clogged, uh, you may see some signs of slow draining plumbing. Uh, your shower drains, for example, may not be working as well as they used to. And uh, if this problem is left uncorrected, uh, you could have sewage backing up in your house. Some other things you should know are, don't pour cooking grease or other oils down the drain. It builds up quickly in the septic tank, and if it gets to the drain field, it may clog it. Never use septic tank additives. These products have not been proven to be effective. The natural processes of your septic system are effective for wastewater treatment. Do not put materials that won't easily break down in your system, such as paper towels, diapers, cigarettes, or plastics. Practice water conservation. The more water you pump through your system, the more stress you put on it. If you have a swimming pool or a hot tub, don't drain it in your system. Let the water run into the ground away from your drain field. If you have water conditioning equipment, backwash water with a high iron content can clog your system, causing it to prematurely fail. Consult with the health department on alternative disposal options for backwash. Wash full loads of clothes and distribute your washing throughout the week so you don't overload the system. Consider quick showers instead of baths. Fix leaky fixtures and consider installing low flow fixtures for toilets and shower heads. These simple practices may greatly extend the life of your system and allow it to operate at its best. Also, once you know where your tank, recirculating filter, drain field, and reserve areas are located, you want to protect them. 
Do not do any grading or disturb these areas, and never drive over them. The weight can compact the soil and break the pipes, causing your system to fail. Never build a structure or place anything on your drain field or reserve area. When landscaping, make sure it is compatible with your system. Roots can damage pipes and clog the drain field. Grass is the best cover for a drain field. In this video, we looked at what a septic system is and how to take care of that system. It is easy to understand how septic systems can be ignored, out of sight, out of mind. But the importance of a well-maintained system is essential. By following the simple preventative maintenance steps outlined in this program, you will not only be saving yourself a lot of costly repairs, but you'll be doing your part to preserve the clean water resources and the environment of Anne Arundel County that we all enjoy. For more information about on-site sewage systems and proper system maintenance, contact the Anne Arundel County Department of Health at 410-222-7193.